$245,000 560SCC on Bring a Trailer. What the heck? So a few days ago, let's see here, when did the sale wrap up? I think it was... I think it was like um, like last week. Uh, Carbiz Solutions drops this 560 SEC that has been made to look like an AMG wide body. And what we have here is a 560 SEC that has zero authentic AMG history. Sure, it had an AMG wheel. Sure, it had Recaros, but none of those stuff, none, none of those items are put on by AMG. So was this a good investment? Was it a bad investment? Was it a whim that somebody just sort of followed? Or does it show that there's legitimately a market out there for AMG clones? Now, personally, I think that cloning an AMG car or a car like the Red Pig, which I'm going to do a video on a little bit later today, is not a good or fair idea because it sort of dilutes the value of authentic examples. It cheapens actual good cars that could be either restored or supplied to market as really good high quality stock cars or it uh, can mislead buyers into thinking that they're getting something that's authentic or near authentic when in reality those buyers could end up very confused about what they're getting. And um, I see no problem in supplying a car to market that has AMG parts on it in questionable history because there are a lot of those cars floating around but they were sort of done in period by Mercedes dealers or whatever. This car is not that. This car was actually a possible 33,000 mile car. We don't even know if it was a real 33,000 mile car. That seems like it had a very high quality restoration. So of that $245,000 that the seller netted, including his time and labor, he probably has like a buck 50 to a buck 80 in building the car, which is uh, a lot of money and he got very lucky that he broke even on it. Now, a friend of mine had a legitimate AMG Canada wide body 560 SEC show car. It was built by Flying Tigers. And he bought the car right and then he sold it a few, like two years later for 100K. And this is a real AMG wide body SEC, not a clone. So, what that tells you about this car is, first of all, somebody overpaid for it. Number two, the fact that the, the description is loaded with the words AMG style, AMG style, AMG style, AMG style. Uh, a wide body kit on an SEC can't possibly be linked to one builder. If you um, reference uh, Thomas Heights and Rudolf Ness's book, uh, uh, performance and customization tuning for Mercedes, which was published in the mid 1980s, you can see that a bunch of manufacturers had these stupid wide body kits. There were a bunch of other suppliers. There was Lorenzer. There was Trasco. There was SGS. There was um, there was a uh, 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 what else? Um, uh, I don't know. ABC. There was another one. Carlson even had kits for. For, for these cars. Another company called Trasco made a gullwing door wide body SEC. And the, the truth is that there's basically like an, a form of the wide body SEC that everybody looks at. It wasn't just developed by AMG. It was copied and emulated and refined and changed and modified, you know, by a bunch of different manufacturers. Um, for example, I I'm not 100% sure. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that Zinder was the first wide-body kit uh, promulgator. 
I'm not sure. I could be wrong about that. But my point is that there are a bunch of cars that had this crap on it. It's not particularly good. I mean, there were two types of, of wide body kits on AMGs. There were fiberglass flares, and then there were steel flares. Fiberglass is garbage. Cars aren't even supposed to be made of fiberglass. Fiberglass is what you build an RV or a boat out of to save weight. Fiberglass is not even a good construction material because you can't work with it. Once it starts to deteriorate, you're in a lot of trouble and it leaves little splinters in your fingers. I mean, working with it is horrible. Not to mention your lungs. You know, so I don't, I'm not going to pay up, I'm not even going to pay the money for a car with fiberglass or ABS plastic style AMG flares. That stuff in 10 years or 15 years when it starts shrinking disproportionately to the rest of the car is going to look like garbage when you're done. It is, you know. Um, by the way, somewhere in this video I have to say that the, this is my opinion and my opinion only so I don't get sued. But... I am entitled to an opinion, and you know I'm about to go full force on that opinion. But before I do that, if you haven't liked, shared, subscribed, tap the bell for notifications, um, uh, given us a thumbs up or an applause, uh, please do so. So anyway, let's go back into what my opinion is of a shop that would that would do this or try to do this regularly. First of all, I think that it's a waste to take a good SEC. Let's say this is a real 33,000 mile car. You're not going to make $245,000, but I think it's a waste of time, of material, of mental energy to take a really good, solid, original car in this day and age and turn it into one of those. There are plenty of junky, crappy, tired, rusty SECs that were owned by people to whom it was just another car in the 80s and 90s that have disintegrated. And for that reason, if you're going to do something stupid like this, you need to start with a car that basically is, is on its way to used auto services on eBay to be picked apart and butchered. Um, I don't think that the seller is trying to market the car as something is not. It's not. But I would tell the buyer this. You paid way too much. You bought a fake I don't understand why you would want to buy a car like this when it's not going to drive any better. It just has a look to it, and looks get old. And when all that stuff starts to age, it looks crispy, creamy, fresh, perfect now. But when all that stuff starts to age, ugh, you know, it's not, there's not going to be, you know, you'll just be like, oh my gosh, I have this car. Like, you strip the car down, you're going to find huge cuts around the wheel wells. How do we know that those were done properly, you know? You're going to be stuck trying to find um, parts for Recaro seats, which, what do you do when you're like, Recaro seat motor burns out, you know? Plus, this car had some wiring aberrations committed where... The door switches to the seats probably don't work anymore. Now you have your power seat controls in the Recaro seat. You know, what do you do if you are if you run into a wiring issue? There's no way to fix it. Um, same thing probably with the horn setup in the AMG wheel. Same thing probably with the, um, I don't know, what's another thing in this car? Possibly the lighting system. Like, how do we know that the lights are actually, the taillights are actually going to seal to the body? You know, there, there are a bunch of things, but my emphasis is here that this car is less than the build quality of the original product. And um, in that case, it's sort of a losing proposition. So, uh, you know, people like customizing cars. Right now, the trend with 107s and, and, and 126s is to put the European style bumpers and European style headlights on US cars. My advice is if you really want a car that is Eurofied, buy a Euro car. Don't buy a US car and then put cheap garbage on it to try to make it look like a better car than it actually is. Would I personally do that? Heck no. No way. Not interested. Doesn't doesn't appeal to me. You know, there's just no no way. Anyway. Um if you uh, think that I'm crazy and you think that we should do this to every SEC, then leave a comment below. You know, but in the meantime, uh, thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, especially those of you that are keeping your Mercedes stock. And um, enjoy your SEC as it is. <laughs>